I don't know if this is totally showing up on the screen. Um, let's see, are they flipping over? They should be rolling over. We're exactly the same as our undergraduate panel had two. Worst experiences were being talked at, not with. What's coming up there? Some of my favorite ones were um, the best. <laughs> They're good. They're really good. And we're going to get your written answers in and share them back with you in some way as well. But it's all about not two-way street of communication. When it doesn't work, it wasn't a collaboration. So hopefully today, um, oh, my favorite was when it was good, I learned stuff, right? When it didn't work, I learned nothing. So teaching is really not so much about uh, teaching, it's really about whether they're learning or not. So today, it's not gonna be a boot camp, I'm sorry, I think that was in one of the schedules somewhere, um, but it really is gonna be active. We're gonna get you actually by the end of the morning um, going through the cycle, going through the cycle of planning something, thinking about what you want your student, one of those people from another field on your left or right, what you want them to be able to do at the end of a five minute experience and then having that two-way street and getting some communication going about it. Sound all right? Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Um, first, I just need a little bit of context. How many of you um, taught before, have already taught something or other? Excellent, so 60%. Um, how many of you are teaching this fall quarter? Good, okay, about 30%. Um, how many of you are teaching sometime this year? And include the 30% who are teaching in the fall. Let me see the cumulative. Okay, excellent. How many of you went running this morning? <laughs> Up in the back, they're all in the back corner. Um, how many, let's see. Yeah, how many of you just moved from somewhere colder than Southern California? Me <laughs> too. So I just moved from Boston. Um, yeah, okay, we have some other Bostonians. So we can get used to the warm weather together. Um, and yeah, how many of you might want to get a major grant someday in the future, like an NSF, an NIH? Excellent, excellent. How many of you might at some point be willing to testify on a scientific matter before Congress if asked to do so? Very cool. All right. So the point is, all of those activities, whether you're teaching next week, next Monday, or Tuesday, whether you're writing a grant proposal at some point, whether you are planning to testify before Congress, this is all about being able to communicate the depth and complexity of science in a way that people get it. Um, and our world requires it, you're gonna do it, and you're gonna help the undergraduates at Caltech be able to do it too. Um, who went to John Grotzinger's talk at uh, Convocation? Anyone? Yeah. This is no more important than right now, and, and science needs communicators. So I hope that today, whether you are teaching you know, next week or next year or in three years, um, will, will matter and that you'll take something away from it. Um, everybody know about SURF here at Caltech? It's uh, the undergraduate, one of the undergraduate research programs. So you are also gonna have undergraduates working in your labs, you're gonna be mentoring them. Um, and again, whether your teaching involves being in a classroom or just working with students in an informal way in the lab, uh, it really does matter. It matters. Okay, so that's my little that's my little soapbox. Um, so our goals for today really simple, and I don't think we really need to do much about the role stuff because John did a great job and Joe did a great job this morning. Um, but we can answer any questions that might be lingering. Actually, I probably can't because I'm so new about the role of the TA. But what I really want to do is just give you um, a, a fairly simple but reliable and actually fairly, um, it, it'll be useful for your whole careers, a process to reliably plan teaching that works and implement it. Um, and then we're gonna just do it, we're gonna try it, we're gonna revise it, we're gonna go through that whole process. And then if we have time at the end, I have some um, fun findings from research on teaching and learning uh, that might be of interest to you. So actually, I didn't do much of an introduction. My own background is in physics as an undergraduate, yeah. my PhDs in atmospheric chemistry, woo-hoo. Um, so I've been teaching about this stuff for a while, and then 
have also then moved on to, to teach about teaching and, and be with institutions as they plan um, how to make the environment you know, better and more effective, and I'm excited to be launching that today. So I hope that this is actually not your last and only chance to get training about teaching, but that you'll have more opportunities as you go along here at Caltech. All right, so TAs at Caltech um, have lots of different roles. You've already heard it, labs, recitation sections, grading, being really entrepreneurial. I think we might see some interesting new kinds of opportunities for TAs coming up in the next years as we launch into different kinds of um, massive, open, online courses, MOOCs, yeah, heard about these, Coursera and things like that. There might be a role for TAs that will be interesting. And you'll hear more about this in your, not that necessarily, but um, ways of TA in your option meetings this afternoon. First and foremost though, you are providing a personal contact with the information, with the subject matter for students. Um, what do you think differs between students, and this is nationwide with the research on students who stay with science and who leave science? How many think um, preparation? No, a little bit. Conceptual difficulties. People who don't get it leave science, right? Feeling overwhelmed? How about feeling like I can't get help? Yeah, a few. Affected by discouraging and competitive climate? Yeah. Influenced by role models to stay or go? Absolutely. So you're pretty much right on. The first three matter far less than we might think that they do. The last three really do matter. So although at Caltech, fewer students are leaving science, we're not having that leaky pipeline problem, it does happen. And it might matter very much to whether students go on to pursue another degree or devote their careers to science. You really do have a huge um, influence on students. So the other piece that you've already heard about is that your role is to make an active, have an active kind of engagement happen with the material for students. Those percents over on the right, they really are on the left for you. They really need like error bars or something. Um, those are not necessarily accurate, but the one thing that the research on teaching and learning shows over and over again reliably, whether it's single studies or meta studies, um, large sample sizes, qualitative, quantitative, is that the, the, you have to construct the learning. And you, you already know this, um, but you have the opportunity to, to do it. It's much harder to do that, although uh, Professor Johnson really does in, in even large classes. You're gonna have the smaller groups of students where it's, it's the barrier, the threshold is much lower to get them actually doing the thinking. The challenge for you, though, is gonna be how to be specific about what kind of active things students need to be doing to get what you want them to get. But we're going to handle that today, so no worries there. Okay, so are there any lingering questions you have about the role of TAs at Caltech? Yeah, do you have one? No? So this is the wait time. I'm actually thinking if anyone wants to work with me on an app or a device for wait time, Totally into that. You can embed something. Okay, good. I think this is a reasonable time maybe not to have a, a question because we've already heard a lot about the role of TAs as we've been going. But let's get on to this reliable teaching process. Um, there's a little bit of a parallel. This is uh, kind of a just a, a process for planning and getting feedback about teaching that parallels. Um, the scientific method um, in that you have a hypothesis, well, okay, so there's different, different kinds of models for, the, for a scientific process. You know something about the world, you've observed it in some fashion, we're not operating in a vacuum, um, but then you have a little bit of a hypothesis, you're, you're planning something. You might execute some experiment, do some teaching, get some information back, make an observation, check whether you are on the right track, and then act, you're gonna revise what you do. It's, but it's sometimes messy, and we'll talk about that a little bit more today as well. So in teaching, um, the process that we're gonna play with today, you'll see if it works and how it works for you. Whoops, I don't have it up there. Um, in planning, we're gonna really think carefully about what the outcome for the students, what we want them to be doing in any segment of learning, right? And we'll get very specific about that. 
Um, then we do this thing called teaching. But let's think about it as guided doing for the moment, right? So it's less about you teaching, 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 and more about getting the students to do something. Um, as we've been, as, as the students emphasized, as you've been hearing, as you already know from your own comments, watching what happens, getting some evidence back about the learning that's going on is essential, and you can do it at a small scale, and you can do it at a large scale, like on a problem set or exam. But the feedback loop is gonna be continuous when things are going really well. And then, this is key. Whether it goes well or whether it doesn't, you take action. You revise your strategy, you try it differently, whether it's finding and... We okay? Okay. Felicia's on it, something's going on out there. Um, we figure out how we wanna change right now, what we wanna do in the future, and that's just part of the process. All right, so let's go ahead and have a little time to try this out. You guys ready? This would be the bulk of the morning because you've been sitting for a while. Um, but here's a little hint. So Professor Johnson talked about getting students up at the board, getting them active. It's also challenging sometimes to get over the barrier and get a group of people, whether it's 200 or whether it's 10, to actually go ahead and carry something out. Um, students are sometimes coming to a learning situation with a little bit of a like, I'm gonna hang back and wait and see attitude um, about what they'll have to participate in and you know how active they're gonna need to be. But it's helpful if you can just keep these three things in mind when you are about to launch anything interactive, try to be clear about the purpose. So I would like you to go through this process of planning, doing, checking, and acting for your teaching so that it becomes habitual and normal and you get started on your teaching careers at this level um, in a way that will serve you for the long haul. That's my purpose. Uh, the process, we're gonna take time on all of those steps. We're gonna explore them and execute them and then come back and see what we got from it. And at each point, I'll tell you how much time we'll take and what to be doing. And at the end, you're actually, your product is gonna be uh, five minutes of teaching with a fellow student, which should be both fun in that you'll learn a little bit more about their field um, and informative because you'll get a chance to dry run um, a little bit of an explanation or a piece of teaching before you have any students, real students, in front of you. So use that when you're launching anything, purpose, process, product. It'll help your students be on the same page with you as well. Okay, before we start though, um, just take a moment, two minutes, one minute, I'll see who looks up and, and how far we are, to pick a topic that you could teach teach in about five minutes. Some little thing from your field or background could be why the sky is blue, right? Some little interesting bit about your field that you think is important. Jot it down if you want. <laughs> you started teaching it, haven't you? You can't help it. It's so exciting. Can I have a pen? Are there any extra pens so that while we're teaching? Yeah, we'll take care of your needs if you have a if you don't have a pen or something. But, but come back with me. You ready? Okay. So everybody's got a topic. Thanks, Felicia. So you know the content, right? Let's think about that outcome for students. So get ready for it. I'm going to give you a part of speech that will serve you for the rest of your careers. I swear to you, institutions of higher learning across the United States are using this list. I'm thinking about putting it on mugs, t-shirts, right? It's very handy. These are the best verbs for teaching that you will ever get to know anywhere. Um, and what they do is get more specific about our catch-all verbs that we like to use, like know and understand. Right? Think back to your topic and what we're going to do in just a minute, I'm going to do a little cold prep for what we'll do in a little bit, is translate your topic, which is the content, into some verbs, some actions that you hope students, your person from another discipline sitting next to you, will actually be able to do at the end of their five minutes with you. 
It's a little thing, but it changes everything. And one of the reasons it changes everything is that something broad, like, well, I want them to understand why the sky is blue. How do you see understanding? But it's very different if you want them to then be able to explain to you why the sky is blue. Or if you want them to just recognize why the sky is blue. That's very different. Um, if you'd like them to be able to just uh, label parts of the diagram about why the sky is blue, again, it's a different task that you're asking them to be able to execute. And it might change how you think about what you're going to do in those five minutes. Um, these kind of go in groups from, at the top, a little less complicated, a little simpler, cognitively, learning-wise. And then they get more, um, more, more tricky, more difficult, because they require more original production as we go down the list. So in the middle, the things that we might say, oh, I just want them to practice. I'd like them to get better at something. Um, you, are, are you asking them to apply? an idea to a new situation? Are you asking that they be able to diagram it out to actually give you a picture of how a concept works or how a process works? And I see some of you writing the verbs down, but they're already online, so you don't have to worry about it. They're up on the uh, teachlearn.caltech.edu site. We'll give you all of this later. Okay. I have one thing. Yeah, yeah. I hope this is helpful. Um, but uh, one thing I picked up from the training that they did for new professors was they put there's a, one more thing that goes right on top of this one level up, and it is when you're writing down your goals for teaching, you put the students will, which is way different than what I was tending to want to write. Um, I would say things like you know situation, uh, but then you're actually making um, a, an original in a way not original to the world ever, but original to that student um, prediction about something new. Um, plan, evaluate, creating a program to do something new, or programming is a verb that you know some other institutions don't worry so much about, but we do a lot. Um, and revision, to revise. If you want the student to be able to adjust their ideas, see how they might have been wrong, or how they could improve, and then make that improvement is a pretty complex thing. So in any given, say, five minute little mini lesson, um, a lot of these things might be at play. But what I'd like you to do in the next little bit, your two minutes, your next two minutes, is to just write at least one, one good outcome for your student, for your topic. What would you like them to be able to do at the end of the five minutes with you. And I'll kind of walk around and help you problem solve this if you'd like. Maybe some of the others of us.
understand in your outcome. Got one? Okay. So if you if you've used the understand or no, try to revise it. Try to get something more specific in there because it will help you with the whole process down the road. So we're going to take one more minute um, just to revise, check your outcome. Raise your hand if you have questions. I'll come by. making sure that you have fun, that you find things that are rewarding and interesting. And as I read through your comments about the best teaching experience, teaching and learning experiences you've had, it, it really was that joy that came through of like, getting it is awesome when you get it as a learner. Helping someone else get it is also pretty awesome. Um, and that awesomeness is going to probably help your whole experience um, feel productive and and rewarding, and it really should. So we want to make your planning for teaching efficient. It should never be going on and on and on. There shouldn't ever be like 20 hours of prep for a one hour recitation. So we'll talk at the end a little bit about making it real and incorporating it, but using a reliable process is a big part of that. Okay, so we're gonna just take five minutes now, and this actually should be a pretty quiet five minutes because you don't wanna you don't want to give it away to the person next to you before we actually do the guided doing, the teaching piece. Um, but go ahead and make a few notes about how, or think through how you want to guide your student through this next piece of teaching. Um, think about think about how you're going to make the outcome clear to them so they know and you know where you're headed. You both share the map and you're on the road together. Think about what you're going to say, not in every word, but what are the key pieces, and think about what you might ask them, what you're going to get from them, and how you're going to observe their ability um, to do the thing that you want them to be able to do, the verb that you've chosen. Um, and so let me just say, too, that um, you know when you're, how many of you do experimental work? So there are some experimentalists in the room, right? Um, 
typically, you kind of think about what evidence would matter before you design the experiment, right? What data do you need to show or add to the body of knowledge? Um, rather than just turning on the spectrometer and like seeing what we get, you know? Um, sometimes with teaching, we have a tendency to plan the experiment, the teaching, before we really think about what evidence we're gonna need at the end. So that's the other thing that this process will hopefully help you do, is think about the evidence, the outcome, what you're gonna observe first, um, and then target your experiment, your teaching toward that. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about five minutes. Quiet work time is fine. If you have a question though, just bring any of us over who are on the orientation team. But you can talk if you need to.
through that process for um, teacher, student, pair number one. So who's gonna teach this round? We should have half the pairs going up. You confer a little bit. Who's gonna teach? Who's gonna teach? I don't see half the hands up yet. Who's gonna teach? Who's gonna teach? Who's gonna teach? Okay, excellent. So, a couple of reminders. You already know this, right? But make sure you both know what the outcome is. Just help the student understand, why are we doing this? It's what you heard from the undergraduates this morning. Why does this matter? Help them see why. Um, guided doing, right? It's not all about you talking. It's what we're gonna see them do at the end. Um, and then remember to observe. Try to watch them, facial expressions, little cues. Um, the more you can be open and kind of soaking all of that in, it's really hard when you're starting out as a teacher, although like 50% of you have taught something before, so you know it's hard to be taking all that information in when you're with a group of people and managing it all at once, but it gets easier over time with like anything. Um, your expertise will, will develop, but just knowing that you're watching, even if your job here is to gather information as well as convey and guide. All right, are you ready? Bring it on, that's what I like to hear. Okay, so this one I'm actually gonna time really pretty carefully to make sure that we don't go over. So your five minutes begins now.
of it felt shorter. Um, just a little thing, and I'm sure those of you who have taught before remember this. Time gets really weird in a classroom. Um, those of you in physics, I'm sure you can figure out something about a special relativity of teaching. But time is different. Things will take longer, especially when you're looking for that understanding, when you're looking for the evidence of learning. It really does take more time than you think it will, which means that you probably have to prepare less stuff than you might think you need to. So don't underprepare. But just keep in mind that your, your estimate of how long things will take is probably going to be um, not the reality. All right, so we're going to